The Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant, which was devastated by a tsunami, has initiated the discharge of its first batch of processed radioactive water into the Pacific Ocean. This controversial move has swiftly led China to impose a ban on Japanese seafood. On Thursday, the release of wastewater prompted protests both within and outside Japan. Japanese fishing associations expressed concerns that this action could further harm the reputation of their seafood, while groups in China and South Korea raised apprehensions, elevating it into a political and diplomatic matter. In response, Chinese customs authorities immediately implemented a ban on seafood from Japan. This prohibition encompasses all imports of aquatic products, including seafood, according to an official notice. Authorities stated their intention to dynamically adjust relevant regulatory measures as appropriate to prevent the risks of nuclear contaminated water discharge to the health and food safety of our country. Following China's announcement, Tomoaki Kobayakawa, the president of Tokyo Electric Power Company Holdings, expressed the utility's readiness to compensate Japanese business owners for the damages resulting from the foreign government's export bans. He emphasized the importance of China as a key trading partner and vowed to provide scientific explanations to expedite the lifting of the ban. Prime Minister Fumio Kishida stated that Japan had formally requested China to immediately revoke the ban. He affirmed Japan's commitment to safeguarding the fisheries industry's reputation amidst the wastewater release. Both the Japanese government and TEPCO argue that the water must be released to create space for the plant's decommissioning and to prevent accidental leaks. They assert that the treatment and dilution processes will render the wastewater safer than international standards and have a negligible environmental impact. Tony Hooker, the director of the Center for Radiation Research, Education, Innovation at the University of Adelaide, supported this claim, stating that the water released from the Fukushima plant complies with World Health Organization drinking water guidelines. Nonetheless, some scientists express concern about the long-term effects of the residual low-level radioactivity remaining in the water. In a live video broadcast from the plant's control room, TEPCO activated a seawater pump, marking the start of the contentious project anticipated to span several decades. Rafael Mariano Grossi, the Director General of the International Atomic Energy Agency, IEA, issued a statement on Thursday assuring that IEA experts were on site to monitor the discharge's compliance with IEA safety standards. The IAEA also pledged to provide live data about the discharge through a dedicated web page and maintain an on-site presence throughout the release. The United States commended Japan for its transparency and responsible management of the Fukushima Daiichi site and treated water release. The State Department spokesperson Matthew Miller confirmed that the IAEA had determined Japan's process to be safe and consistent with international nuclear safety standards. This water release comes more than 12 years after the nuclear meltdowns in March 2011, triggered by a massive earthquake and tsunami. It represents a significant milestone in addressing the growing stockpile of radioactive water, which has impeded the removal of hazardous melted debris from the reactors. The initial activation of the pump on Thursday afternoon conveyed the diluted, treated water from a mixing pool to a secondary pool within 10 minutes. Subsequently, it traveled through a connected undersea tunnel, ultimately discharging one kilometer, 0.6 miles off the coast. This process is expected to take approximately 30 minutes with constant monitoring of water volume, pump conditions, and alerts. Junichi Matsumoto, an executive at TEPCO, explained that Thursday's release was intentionally modest to ensure safety. The treated wastewater is partially recycled as cooling water after treatment while the remainder is stored in roughly 1,000 tanks, nearly 98% of which are already full. To accommodate the facilities required for decommissioning, these tanks must be emptied, a critical step in the process. Preparations for the release began on Tuesday, with one ton of treated water diluted with 1,200 tons of seawater and kept in the primary pool for two days for final safety sampling. On Thursday, a batch of 460 tons was sent to the mixing pool for the actual discharge. The Fukushima region, still in recovery from the disaster, is concerned about the potential impact of the release on its fisheries, tourism and economy. 
The current fish catch in Fukushima is only about one-fifth of its pre-disaster level, partly due to a decline in the fishing population. China has heightened radiation testing on Japanese products from Fukushima and nine other prefectures, leading to customs delays lasting weeks, according to fisheries agency officials. Prime Minister Fumio Kishida emphasized that the release could not be postponed and was essential. He noted that an experimental removal of a small amount of melted debris from the number two reactor using a remote controlled giant robotic arm is planned for later this year. In 2021, the Japanese government announced its intention to release the treated water into the sea. On Sunday, Kishida made an impromptu visit to the plant before meeting with fisheries representatives and pledging support for their livelihoods until the release concludes. Questions arose about the hurried timeline, with some speculating it was designed to align with Kishida's busy political schedule in September. However, officials from the Economy and Industry Ministry clarified that the aim was to commence the release as early as possible while maintaining stringent safety protocols ahead of the fall fishing season. The March 2011 earthquake and tsunami severely damaged the plant's cooling systems, leading to the meltdown of three reactors. Highly contaminated cooling water has continuously leaked into building basements and mixed with groundwater. TEPCO intends to release 31,200 tonnes of treated water by the end of March 2024, emptying only 10 tanks due to the contaminated production of wastewater at the plant. Subsequently, the pace of release will increase. To support our channel's growth and ensure broader awareness, kindly hit the like and subscribe buttons. This will help us reach more individuals and disseminate valuable information. Thank you in advance.